Guess what, everybody? We're going on tour. So all of our Lady Gang fans in Florida are always like, Florida gets left off the tour. And that's because it always gets left off because it's very hard to get to when you're touring because it's like kind of out of the way. But we were like, nope, this summer, it's Florida. We are heading to the Tampa Improv on June 26th. It is a nice Sunday afternoon brunch, 3 p.m. Lady Hang Live with us in Tampa. You can get tickets at theladygang.com or tampaimprov.com. We'll see you there. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Kelty Knight here with Jack Vanek. We are missing our mama, our brand new mom. Uh, Becca is on maternity leave with baby Ford right now. So we have a special guest host for you, our friend. She's been on the podcast before, host of The Real, icon of Holly Wood, and has a brand new book, Love Me As I Am. Please welcome to the podcast, Garcelle. So congratulations on the book. We're going to get to that, but we have to stay on format. So good week, bad week. Here we go. Good week. Yes, it is. Bad week. Oh, no. Okay. Good week is obviously the book. Good week. Yes, will be the book. Yes, yes, yes. Good week is going to be the book. I'm so excited. I'm so, I can be real with you guys as I am. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I know you know. It's it's kind of terrifying, right? Because I'm assuming that if the book is anything like your career and your life, you did not hold back. I did not hold back. <laughs> Kelty, are we going to talk about the book now, or should we save no, like no, no. book We're questions talk about until it. later? We're talk about it, but good book. Okay, Jack, go. Good week, bad. Because I, I have so many questions, but yeah, I'll save them for later. Okay, <laughs> so my good week. Um, you know the saying that it's like. Uh, don't ever own a boat, but like find a friend that owns a boat or whatever that saying is. Yeah. yeah why would you do? I have done that. My best friend is dating this amazing man that owns a sailboat. He's a captain Ooh. and he loves to take us out onto the big open seas while I just enjoy my libations. I have some snacks and a sandwich and I can just sail the open sea. And I feel like I really succeeded in life because I found yeah. that. This is absolutely, and you don't have to pay for it. Gas, no, No. maintenance. Boats are so expensive. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to learn how to sail. It looks so fucking hard. No, thank you, Jack. This is bullshit. Because before you got engaged to Jerry and you were just dating, what did I say to you? You were our last chance for a jet. Yeah, because like. Kelty and Becca have somewhat normal husbands. I was like the last chance to date a yeah. billionaire. Yeah. And, Jet. And, yeah. And I, I missed my shot. So yeah. now I no, have to have, have a good man. Um, he's the best. He's the best. Oh, he just doesn't have a jet yet. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. It's not over. It's not over. It's not but now over. I have somebody with a, you know, a small sailboat and I feel really good about it. I love it. Wow. Okay. Listen, putting up those sails is hard. We did a housewife trip last season and we were on this like a hundred foot yacht. It was just insane. And uh, sailboat. It wasn't a yacht, I guess. I don't even know the difference. Um, and it was all run by women. The captain was a man, but all the women were pulling and, and pulling up the sails. And I was like, this is a lot of work. It's so I'm much work. To go to Pilates. I know. And it's constant, you know, you just want to like sit there and enjoy your life. But anyways, that's my good week. Um, my bad week is, and I've talked about this a lot, Garcelle, I can't sleep. I have like bad insomnia. It's just like a whole thing. And I've come to a point now where everything involving my sleeping is I'm having stressful dreams every single night about like my fiance leaving me or me leaving him or losing a ring or just like everything falling apart. I grind my teeth to like oblivion and then I sleep in a pretzel. And I'm just wondering out there for anybody listening, or if you know, if anybody knows how to not be so goddamn stressed while you're sleeping, because my normal life is okay and not that stressful, but sleeping is where it all just manifests. I have problems sleeping too. I hate to hear that. I mean, it's not, it's stressful because you know, you have things to do the next day. You need to be rested, right? But for me, I feel like, okay, this is what I do. I do crazy shit. I do 
I have a banana. I have warm milk. I lather myself with lavender. I make sure the room is dark or I have, it's like, how many things do I need to do? To to I know. Sleep? Wait, what does the banana do? Banana is supposed to be great before you go to sleep. Banana or also a teaspoon or a tablespoon of honey, pure oh. honey. Just that's supposed to help. So try that tonight. I don't know. I will try it. No, I am like, so I, I'm desperate. I'm just, it's like everything manifests while I'm sleeping. I sleep just fine. <sighs> I think that's like part of you, Jack, is that you like, you're so chill in your regular life. Like I sleep amazing, <laughs> baby. The ring, the aura <laughs> ring is like nine hours a night. I'm like in bed at eight 15. I'm reading for an hour and then I'm like up to sleep, never wake up, whatever. But I'm a stress case and such an asshole yeah. during the whole day is just, <laughs> And then, like, when I sleep, I'm, like, so sound. So this is what you get. This is karma of your life. Hilarious. Which one would you rather? Oh, I, exactly. Honestly, me. Yeah. I don't want to live in Kelty's brain. It's awful. <laughs> um, okay. She does week, she good does week, bad week. She does. My good week is uh, inc- it, it, it's, uh, incredible. So Garcelle, I've been talking about this on the podcast for the last year, but behind the scenes of my life, um, this year has been very challenging for my family. Um, I've had my mom and my dad and my brother all having different health things. Um, and so one of the things that I never talked about because I felt like I was going to zhuzh it until we got good news was that my mom had had a biopsy for a big mass they had found and the biopsy was negative. Yay! Sheila, love you so much. Um, biggest so it, relief. Yeah, biggest relief. Um, yeah. And and the thing is, is that I I see it always in our Facebook group, which is the reason you know my my family has asked me multiple times. Please do not share, share our shit on your podcast. And then I do this anyway. But the thing is, is that I see so many people in our Facebook group, and I know you see this too in your life, Garcelle. Like, there's so many people who it comes back and it's bad news. You know what I mean? And like, people are like, I don't know what to do. There was a girl in our Facebook group just this weekend who was like, I literally just got off the phone with my dad. He has terminal cancer. They said three weeks. Like, I don't, how do you even wrap your head around this? And so I had some time because I was like, okay, what am I going to do if mom, if this is something like, you know, it's just watching your parents age and like, and and, and real life shit is just, it's so heavy. And I just want to like. No, you got to share the good news because you're right. I think people need to know that also there are people who get good news. It's not always bad just because the diagnosis, you know, the first time you went in, I think that's great. And I'm so happy to hear that. I know that's great news, Kelty. Every day, you guys. I know. And there's a thing, because I was such a fucking asshole in my twenties. Like I just never saw my parents. I don't know how uh, you guys were, but like, I just never saw my parents. I was like busy making a dream come true. And like, now I'm like, I just want my parents around me all the time. Yeah. Every day. I love that. You said that I said um, last night to my son, cause I was like, Hey, can we hang out? And he was like groaning. And I was like, one day you get to you hung out with me more. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I'm like best friends with my parents. I always have been, but like, even as I get older, I live a uh, an hour away from my parents. And I'm like, but I need to be closer. Like I need to be closer uh-huh. to you so I can like go out to coffee every day if I want to. But yeah, I think the older you get, you're like, oh, I just want to be around you guys. Yeah. You. That's really nice. Okay. Bad week. And like, we couldn't have Garcelle on without talking about poop a little bit. Um, and so here's the thing. Uh, I'm walking down my, I live on this hill and everyone's like, do not buy a hill house because every time we had all that rain at Christmas, like, and the earth shakes, everything's going to break. So my pool's like leaking, like Uh all this shit is going wrong with the house because of the rains. And I'm like walking my dog and I was like, that's a weird pipe. Oh, it looks like it's burst. Huh. And like, there's a lot of fly. What's coming out of that pipe? There are so many flies. Like, wow, this is the King sewer pipe guys got dislodged from the mud on the hill so you could see it and then it burst and there was literally my husband and I's bodily fluid together coming down the side to the street in like a it's a waterfall of poop guys a waterfall of poop all kinds of flies on it all kinds of things and I was like this is not okay so it's like a biohazard there's nothing like no, there's nothing like in a marriage when you're like, what do you think that is? And then you're looking at each other and they're like, that's our shit. <laughs> that's love, baby. <laughs> Should we go have sex? Love. God, it was a f***ing That's a bad week. That's a bad week. It's and bad. It's a stinky okay. week. 
It's a really bad week. All right. When we come back, we are going to talk to Garcelle about her brand new book and all of the many questions we have about the many jobs she has and all the gossip. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Nutrafol. And here's the thing. I just like want you to know that Nutrafol actually works. But here's the deal. You got to take it for like six months. Your hair grows really slow. And to get those vitamins in and see the new growth, people are always DMing me. I heard about your hair journey. What did you do? I was like, Nutrafol. And I'm on year three and a half, which is why I have the biggest, fullest head of supermodel hair without any fake hair, without any special zhuzh, like it is it. And my mom recently called me and she was like, my eyelashes are really thin. And my friend was taking Nutrafol. Can you get me some Nutrafol for my eyelashes? Like it makes all the hair on your body grow. And it's really an amazing product. So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our Lady Gang show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code LADY. And you're going to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere. It's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Sorry, mom. Plus free shipping on every order. Get 15 $15 off at Nutrafol.com. That's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. Promo code LADY. I love this next sponsor, Freshly. Not only do I use them, I send them to everyone in my life who's going through a hard time, is extra busy, doesn't have time to cook themselves dinner. The reason I love this is because it is delicious pre-cooked meals that aren't frozen, tasteless, or highly processed. So food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food. Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, then delivered fresh. I'm telling you, they're delivered fresh to your door. I love all the meals that I've tried. Zach's a big fan too. I just love it so much. And you can get the food you love so incredibly easy. You use the Freshly website or app to find the meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. You choose from over 50 nutritionist designed entrees like their classic steak peppercorn, multi serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese, which is, oh my gosh, so good. Stop stressing about dinner right now. Freshly is offering our listeners $125 off your first five orders when you go to freshly.com slash lady. That's $125 off at freshly.com slash lady. I really, really, really wish that you guys could have been in the room with us this morning at Jack's house when Becca flew in for our photo shoot and heard our conversation about waxing our bum holes. It was so intense. Um, and that brings me to the fact that this podcast is brought to you by European Wax Center. We love European Wax Center. They're so nice there. They make you feel so comfortable even when you're in uncompromising positions. Before I went to Mexico last week, I got my toes done, my underarms, my nipples, my everything. And we we're talking about it. And you just get in this routine with the waxing and it, it's so easy and summer's coming. And there's just something about it. Even if your life isn't together, you go in, you get your wax and then you kind of strut out and you feel really, really good. Here's the deal. We want you to take a real spring break and book yourself a moment of smooth at European Wax Center. Make your reservation today. Your first wax is free. We're we're so excited about that. Love you, European Wax Center. Now back to the Lady Gang. Okay, so we're back. So Garcelle, first of all, congratulations on the book. Everyone, we're going to put so up amazing. Like all of our social media. Um, there's a couple things I wrote down about it, but in general, why was this the time to do it other than you're the most popular? <laughs> well, the timing is right because I feel like why not? Right. That was the first, I think that was the first one. Then I thought, do I have stories to tell? And then I went, oh, oh, oh yeah. Do I have stories to tell? So the timing, it just feels like, you know, I'm at an age where I, a little bit of zero, if I can say that. Yes. But at the same time, I felt like maybe it'll inspire someone maybe because listen, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And the fact that I am here, I always say like, I couldn't dream big enough to live the life that I live now and coming from where I came from, it, it's pretty extraordinary. So I thought, yeah, I can write some stories and maybe share some insight and uh, keep it moving as I do. Was there anything that you felt like, I need to check with my lawyer on this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you share? <laughs> Was there anything you checked with your lawyer and then the lawyer said, we'll probably take this out? <laughs> yes. for sure, for Love sure. it. Um, you think, have to tea on everyone. Yeah, well, you know, I've been in the industry for so long. So yeah. I've 
bumped into people, dated people, saw things. So that was, uh, and it's not about, and what I really want to get out there, it's not about bashing anyone, which I don't do. It's not about trying to exploit, exploit someone. It's really my story and my journey. This little girl from Haiti moved to the United States, didn't speak a word of English, um, and here I am getting to live this life that's incredible. And I always say that it's a normal life, but every now and then I get to do something extraordinary. Yeah. Well, the past few years, extraordinary has come more than normal. Right. right? So there, there's been a lot there, moving to New York at the age of 17 and living with Eileen Ford, not knowing, you know, didn't even know you could model for a living. Like I had no idea about all these things. And also getting divorced in my 40s. Who wants to do that with two three-year-olds? Um, no one in my late 40s, no one wants to do that. So it's a journey of highs and lows and everything else in between. And when you started writing or when you had the idea to write the book, was there a specific story that came to mind that you're like, I need to tell this one thing or this is the first thing that I'm going to write about? Like, was there a specific moment in your life? No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, it, I didn't go in it that way. Me and my my girlfriend, uh, Nicole E. Smith, we wrote the book together and we were just like, she knows me like the back of her hand. And so we would sit around and say, well, let's start from the beginning. Okay. And so what we did is we did sort of like little essays of different times in my life and then married them together. I love that. I yeah. love this. Um, I think this is an interesting, okay. It's, I have this like as my fifth question, so I'm going to it and then I'm coming back. Um, <laughs> One of the things that really stood out to me on Housewives and like, I'm so, I just watched the Salt Lake reunion last night. So I'm like all in Salt Lake, but like I, I, on your, on your show, there was someone and I can't remember who it was, but they were like, you just need to stay relevant. And you were like, bitch, I've been relevant. (laughs) Yes. I can't stop thinking about that, Garcelle. I've thought about every time I see you some post something on Instagram, you did this beautiful, um, photo shoot recently for this magazine of like all these women women that had like empowered and paved the way as black women in Hollywood. And, and I just like, whole. I can't believe anyone would say that. You know, what's interesting because the minute she said that people started pulling receipts and there's memes out there, (laughs) like the social media were on it. I didn't have to do anything. Oh my Um, God. I think that was an easy thing for her to say, Mm -hmm. you know, in the moment. But I think she even realized it, that after she said it, it was like, wait, wait a minute. I mean, this, you know, I've been in the industry for so long and done so many things. And at first, people thought it was a step backwards for me to do Housewives. They were like, uh... why don't you do a reality show? And I was like, you know what? I really, I've always been open to trying new things. My kids were about to go to middle school. I really wanted to be around. And as an actress, I was in Vancouver, Atlanta, New York, everywhere but home. And I really wanted to be, to do a job that would keep me at home. And what I didn't realize keeping me at home, that they also came with me to my home. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is an interesting thing. So this is my first award season away from Entertainment Tonight. And I got to be honest with you guys. I'm living life like the real, the real humans of the world, right? So like when you live in LA and you work in Hollywood, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, like I really need to know about licorice pizza. These are my screeners that I have not watched. I just got them too. I haven't watched them. And like, and everyone's like oh my god who's gonna win the oscar whatever i gotta tell you normal people do not give a fuck about the oscars nobody i mean it's wonderful to win and i love the dresses but i'll tell you i know every storyline from the housewives of the franchises that i watch i follow every single one of those bitches on instagram i know where they got their shoes right i couldn't tell you who's nominated for an oscar this year isn't that interesting Samuel L. Jackson just, I think, wrote something where he was like, why aren't the popular movies being nominated? That's what people care about. Like the spider the you know what I mean? Why are we only focusing on that? So I agree with you. More, normal people aren't really paying attention. So well, when I, people are like, it's a step down for Housewives, I'm like, it's actually a step up because the most popular people in pop culture, the most relevant to everyday people around the world are Housewives and Bachelor. Like, hands down. It's so I'm true. Blind. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Oh, um, obsessed. I, yeah. Listen. I've, like I said, I've been in the industry for a long time. I've worked with some incredible people throughout my, my career. I have never gotten more attention than when they announced that I was joining Beverly Hills. I'm sure. I'm sure. 
a friend of mine called me. She's like, you're trending. And I'm like, for what? I'm cooking pork chops for the board. <laughs> like, what was I doing? <laughs> that's, that's trend worthy. Well, I, I love this because in, in, in the book, you talk about your disease to please. And I feel like you might be over that at this point in your life, but this. Working on it still. <laughs> okay. So what is the disease to please and, and how did it screw with you and how do you overcome it? Yeah, the disease to please really came from my upbringing, you know, being um, from, you know, Haitian culture where the women or seen and not, and not heard, especially when you're a kid. So the disease to please came from my mom always said, be nice, be nice, be nice. And therefore, I took be nice to a step further that wasn't really supporting me and my boundaries. I didn't know about boundaries. I didn't know about those things. So I felt like I always wanted to please to the detriment of myself, whether it was in a relationship, whether it was with friends, whether it was work. And so when I finally realized that even when I was starting to act, like I couldn't, I was in acting classes and I couldn't get mad because I I had to be nice. Um, So I had to actually learn how to step up for myself and speak up and I can still be nice, but still have a voice. And that's what I've been able to find. And it took me a while, honestly. And now I won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting because um, it, it's like, once you get over that need to be nice, then you are like, you've got your boundaries and you're like, okay, this is like how I'm going to be. But then the people come from the other way and they're like, you're such a dick and you're, yeah. you know, I, and yeah. so I, it's like, how do you win in that? You don't. I mean, I don't think you do. I think the people who are evolved will understand that you're standing up for yourself and the people who aren't are going to think you're a bitch. And to them, maybe we need to be. Well, and also it's like at the end of the day, you can't please everyone. And as a people pleaser, you think that you can. So it's like you have to find yourself in that middle at some point where it's just like, you know, somebody's going to be fucking pissed at me for something and that's okay. Yeah. That's true. And even now, if I have a dilemma, I'll go to my boys and I'm like, I have a dilemma. I said I was going to do this, but I really need time and I can't. And my kids have no qualms. They're like, mom, just get out of it. Or mom, yeah. like, why are you doing this to please someone else? And I was like, oh my God, you guys are 14. Why? <laughs> Thank you for teaching you guys me. Are Eleven. How do you know this? I know. I feel like this next generation, though, they're so into their own boundaries, and they're yeah. like, "I don't work on the weekends." I was like, "Excuse <laughs> me, we all work on the weekends. We never stop working. We work to." But it's funny because Jack, the other day, we were um, we had to hand in something for a, a project that we're working on, and she was like, "Oh my god, I feel like they're gonna hate me." And then I wrote back, and I was like, "It's okay. Everyone hates me." And you kind of have to just live in it that like you get to a point in your life where you're like oh my God, not everyone likes me. Like people yeah. actually are talking shit about me right now. I'm like, right. And well, it's and, okay. And nobody because else is going to hurt you first. So it's like, you got to put yourself first at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. And at the end of the day, are we going to, you know, lay on our beds and go, oh my God, I wish I really, you know, was nicer to that person who didn't get that I was putting up boundaries. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love so, that. On your Instagram, Mm -hmm. Beyonce, just kidding, it's at Garcelle, um, you had this quote, and I pulled it up because I want to talk about it. I thought it was very fitting. Every once in a while, you throw in like a little bit of, you know, rules for life. And the the quote said, once you are matured, you will realize that silence is more powerful than proving your point. And that's why sometimes I shut up on Housewives. (laughs) Well, I'm not going to fight every battle. I, I can't. It's exhausting. Um, I think, you know, sometimes you just, you don't always have to say what you, what you, what, everything you feel, you know, if it's not going to serve you or the person you're talking to, I, I don't think you need to say anything. Yeah. yeah. And then how do you get that out? Because I'm trying to be this person who's like, I don't need to blah, blah, blah. But then like just in therapy or you're journaling or like, yeah, I'm like so angry at someone in Hollywood right now. Like I'm so mm-hmm. angry I could burn their house down. I want to yeah. write an, I want to yeah. write an essay uh-huh. on what a fraud and what a fucking asshole this person is and I want to share it with the Hollywood <laughs> reporter. Like I'm at that point where I have the receipts. I am ready to fucking burn your life down. But obviously I won't do that. Or do that. I might. We're not gonna I might. Let you. But like where do I put that? You put that knowing who they are and therefore you don't expose yourself to them. Do you know what I mean? They've shown you who they are. You get it loud and clear, it sounds like, right? So if you don't have to deal with them, you don't have to deal with them. Unfollow. It'll be breaking news. (laughs) 
<laughs> I know. I did unfollow, and then I felt right. so bad that I refollowed. Oh, no. Right now, you cannot do that. I have not followed Erica back. You can't, <laughs> you can't go back. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. When we come back, Garcelle's ish moment, her Hollywood heartbreak, and then we're going to, we need to talk some housewives ish. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Masterclass. I got to tell you guys, we got Masterclass subscriptions about two years ago. Chris really loves them. We give them to his family for Christmas. I actually just on a flight recently downloaded and watched the Sarah Blakely Masterclass. She does self-made entrepreneurship and it was very inspiring. Obviously, everyone knows her story is so inspiring. But as a little mini entrepreneur, I, I just loved it. So with a range of over 100 classes from world-class instructors, the thing you've always wanted to do or just learn about is closer than you think and it's kind of like a weird form of therapy like you learn but it's entertaining and it's just really 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 interesting so i highly recommend you that you check it out get unlimited access to every master class as a lady gang listener you get 15 percent off an annual membership so go to masterclass.com slash lady now that's masterclass.com slash lady for 15 percent off master class let me know what class you take All right, guys, it's time to talk about chilling. These days, it seems like life forces us to be on all the time, but every now and then it's important to stop and reset. That's when you reach for a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. So we'll take the baby for a walk in the stroller around like, I don't know, 7, 7.30, and we will both bring a little drinky drink. And we have been reaching for Coors Light because it is really the perfect way to unwind. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill. It's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottle and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. How fun is that? So you know when it's time to literally chill. When you need to hit a reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. When we crack these open, we just know that it's time to turn off and get our walk on and watch the sunset. It really is such a nice ritual. So when we need to take a second for ourselves, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash lady. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. You're listening to The Lady Gang. All right, we're back. Garcelle's brand new book out April 12th, Love Me As I Am. So we do this thing on the podcast called The Ish Moment and Your Hollywood Heartbreak. So which do you want to do first? Ish is the moment that you were like, I am me. And then Hollywood Heartbreak is the thing that you didn't get, the job you were supposed to be Catwoman and it didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. so I have a Catwoman story, though. I didn't have a good Catwoman story. So when my, I'm going to go to that first. When okay. my, um, my kid was, uh, when Oliver was younger, Uh, A friend of ours, Denise Denovi, huge producer in Hollywood, she invited us to go trick-or-treating. And and so Oliver, of course, had a cute little outfit. And last minute, I'm like, what am I going to be? I'll be Catwoman. So she goes, meet me. We're going to meet at a friend's house who lives a couple of blocks. And then we're going to go, you know, we're going to go trick-or-treating. I said, okay, great. So I get the address. We get there and ring the doorbell. And I'm, you know, I'm in a cheap Catwoman costume that I bought at, you know, Oz or something, right? And so the door opens and it's Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> oh my God. Like, hi. <laughs> she was like, you look cute. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> what was she dressed up as? <laughs> she hadn't gotten dressed yet. We oh my God. We're going to have cocktails and then we're going to go trick or treating. I was like, oh my God, this is humiliating. Oh Good my God, that's amazing. I love that story though. I mean, that didn't make the book though. No, that didn't make the book. That just made the podcast. <laughs> that's a podcast where this, that's incredible. Okay. Yeah. But a Hollywood heartbreak. Was there something you auditioned for? Was there a job you didn't get? A time when someone was like, we can't have you because you're too whatever? Yeah, there was a movie that I really wanted. And what I what I really loved about the movie is the fact that, okay, I'll set it up. So this man is in love with his wife. Uh, he's at work. She's running errands. She gets killed, dies instantly, right? She was a donor, gave up, uh, donated, you know, organs, a heart. So she, he starts, he's devastated, obviously. And he feels like he starts going to this coffee shop and he's drawn to this coffee shop and he's drawn to this woman who's one of the waitresses and they strike up a conversation. Well, she turns out to be the recipient, Mm. right? Of his wife's body parts. So I wanted it so bad because I thought, oh, how even more interesting the fact that they were 
you know, it would be an interracial love and that's even more out there. You wouldn't think about it. And they were like, nope, we're not going urban with this character. We're not doing it. And I was devastated because I thought that would have made it even more special. So that was one of the things, but there's a lot of things that I didn't get. What but, was that movie? Did it ever come out? It did come out. I think David Duchovny was the, was the lead. Oh, I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, that was, and then other things, other things that I've wanted, obviously, like, you know, to be in sex in the city and all that stuff. Oh, I know and, you would have been great. Well, oh it was kind of, the, the next one was kind of a bust. So maybe that you, you avoided <laughs> that was a, a man's rejection is God's protection. Okay. Yeah. What's your ish moment. The moment that you were like, I did it. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> Uh, can Playboy be my ish? <gasps> yeah. Wait, Googling right now. <laughs> Wait, tell me about this. Listen to me. I was trying to get pregnant for the longest time. Couldn't get pregnant. I was doing, going through infertility uh, treatments and everything like that. And then Playboy comes around the second time. And oh. I thought, you were... <laughs> okay. I mean, let, let me... <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Shit. So. I was really down on my body and I was like, I have a kid. How can I not get pregnant? And we were doing everything. It wouldn't work. So Playboy says, we can shoot you anywhere in the world you want to be. And so me and my glam team were like, should we do it in Africa? Should we do it in Australia? Where should we go? And I was in the middle of uh, fertility treatment, so I couldn't travel. So we shot it in Long Beach on the Queen Mary. <laughs> on the Queen Mary? She's oh my god i love that so i owe me. them i owe my glam team to this day a trip <laughs> but you're so fucking hot it's but unbelievable the fact that you did this while you were on fertility treatments because i had i had good. estrogen patches on my stomach that they airbrushed out because i was trying to get pregnant oh my gosh this yeah. is an insane story because it's everyone crazy. that i know that has gone through that is like i feel gross i'm in my sweatpants like i am not oh yeah yeah, well, mentally I felt like that. And that's why I was like, you know what? I need to get in a better mindset. Let me celebrate my body. A, a friend of mine was pregnant and I was at first jealous. And then I was like, nope, let me throw her her baby shower. Let me, you know, and I did. And I felt like all those things, I believe in energy and what you put out there. And I felt like all those things, you know. I mean, it really is just like a woman doing it all, like a modern woman doing it all. Like that's such a cool thing that you were able to do that at the same time as the fertility treatment treatment and still, I mean, look can bomb. It's those pictures are unbelievable. Thank you. And I only showed my top, by the way, if there's any pictures out there that are my bottoms are not me. Oh yeah. There are some really raunchy photos out there that they like Photoshop. I'm your like, head. how do people get away with that? Yeah. Oh my God. All the time. Yeah. It must be so weird. But I actually love that in everything that you've done in your career, that that moment is your ish moment. Like that just says something about you because it's like there's movies and red carpet premieres and photo shoots and, right. you know, TV, like all these things. And you're like, when I was literally had estrogen patches on and lived and owned my body, like that yeah, is I love that. bomb. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Go girl. You Thank go girl. you. This is, a, this is going to lead me. The, and, then we're get, and then we're getting into the gish. Um, I, I wrote down in my notes, you're so beautiful, right? Like you're, you came to uh, America as a model. You have been in film and television. Obviously, like you are one of the most drop dead people in Hollywood. I f- just turned 40. And so when my 20s, Garcelle, I felt pretty cute. I felt like you couldn't tell me shit. And then as... <laughs> As it got later into 30s and 40s, there's things now that I wake up every morning and I'm like, this is never going to be better. Like this chin (laughs) is what you've got or like, you know, like, and, and so you seem so confident and, but like, I do think there's a weird thing about watching yourself age. So is there anything that you like, I mean, you haven't aged, but like, what's your no, mindset on that? Like, how do you, I always say I'm rotting on the inside. Oh my, <laughs> yes. I love this. I'm writing that down. That's incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, I see changes. I mean, I, I just had a bone density scan last Friday, this last Friday. Um, you know, I, I see it. I see it. And what I'm trying to do, and I've never had Botox. I haven't had it yet. I feel like I'm so blessed because of the genes that I've been given through my parents. Sure. That I feel like I mess with it, that I might regret it. 
-hmm. So I'm trying to do things the natural way. You know, I bought one of those. What is it? Face. Um, oh, what's it called? New Gusha. face. And oh, new new face. Um, I have one of those. Yeah. Okay. It's great. I love that. Um, you know, what are you going to do? I feel like we have to grow old gracefully and yeah. do the things you can do. I was taking beetroot, you know, vitamins today. I, that's how I'm doing it. And hopefully a healthy mind, spirit. What are you going to do? There's only so much you can really change. Yeah, I took out my implants last yeah. in March because they were, I had them in and I was feel, felt like I was getting sick and they weren't. So I took them out. So I'm just trying to, you know. Was that a blind? My was mom a... was 81 when she passed away. And she was so beautiful that I'm hoping I'm following in her footsteps. Well, you definitely oh, yeah. It's all the genes. Yeah. It, okay. Genes have a lot to do with it. Next. Agreed. Gossip. Just a quick yeah. gossip round. Okay. Um, people are saying you're not going back. You're going back. You have yeah, to I'm going back. back. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, Easy. like, when I, uh, when I told everyone... Back. When I told everyone on our Facebook group you were coming on, they were like, do we still care about Erica? Like, is there a point where you're just over it and you have to be like, okay, we're on this cast together, but like, I can't be involved in this drama. A little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. I mean, I care about her. She's a human being. She's going through a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot more than what we know. I mean, day to day, I can't imagine every time you open your phone or you get an email or something, it's something bad. So I care about that. Story-wise, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not so much. And I actually said to her in the beginning of the season, I said, you know, I'm not going to ask you any questions about Tom because I feel like let's move past it. Nothing has really changed. Well, I just think like I... There's a thing that happens with, with the housewives and it's like, we have to remember that we need, I need as my relaxation of watching the housewives, I need fun and drama. Mm. Thank and, you for saying that. That's and, what I said to the producers this year. I said, can we have fun? Yeah. People want to, you know, see us having fun and being outrageous. But it's across the board. It's happening in OC. It's definitely, Salt Lake was barely watchable by the end of the season because all they did was hate each other the whole time. Uh -huh. So it's like, you got to be mad at each other and there's of course going to be drama, but you need to have a general friendship and these, these Amen. moments of opening up and going and doing the wild. And like, I want you to fall over on the jet ski or whatever right, it is. Right. Like those moments are also important. And I think the drama goes so far and these headlines and these characters, like- right. My God, you couldn't have dreamed if you're a casting producer, you can dream up Erica or Jen Shaw or any of these things. But like, no. I don't know. You, I want fun too. I like agree. I think that's Thank you sometimes. For that. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And I think this season we did have fun. We did okay. do some, you know, silly girl stuff. And then the fashion. Do you feel crazy <sighs> pressure because that that I think that your cast is the best dress cast in Housewives history, and it's I like, would agree. <laughs> It's I like, would agree. We don't get enough credit for it. Um, do I feel the pressure? I already love fashion. This is what I right. would dress like this. I mean, not every day, but I would dress like this anyway. But it does, you know, you do bring it up a notch for that purpose. You know what I mean? I'm not always, I'm not always going to be like Dorit where she does head to toe labels, but it is fun. I wore, <laughs> I wore a Balenciaga sweater dress to, uh, to an event and Sutton kept on going, who made your sweater? <laughs> the ones no. that just say Balenciaga, Balenciaga. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. Like, I want you to leave your house in that like Hermes cape. And right. it's like, you live in California, girl. Nobody needs a cape. We don't need this cape. This cape is photo only. And I love that. We for do you. Need it. Exactly. Like, I don't need a cape. I'm wearing a tank top. But like, I love this for you. So, I mean, you always look insane. And I, I just You're love so that. Funny. And I love that, like, when you guys go, I'm like, especially like, in the last season, you're like, oh, we're in this house and it's clearly COVID and like, we can't really go out anywhere, but like, okay, come down for dinner. And everyone's like in a sparkly bodysuit with a song. And I'm like, it's only for you guys. Like, you're not going anywhere. I love it. Thank you for that. Cause it's our escape. It's our escape. Exactly. So you'll get a lot of that this, this season for sure. Oh, I love yeah. it so much. Would you ever do like an ultimate girls trip thing? Or are you just too busy? Not interested. Not one bit. Don't even ask me. <laughs> are you sure? I am a thousand percent sure. One reality show is enough for me. I don't need, you know, no, thank you. <laughs> mm. 
Mm, mm, mm. Okay, yeah. I love this. Um, all right, listen, guys. Garcelle's new book, Love Me As I Am, is out. Yay! Congratulations. We're so happy for you. Let us go. I just want to like PSA this. There are so few women that get book deals. It is mostly men in this world. So let's mm-hmm. Lady Gang get behind this woman. Buy a copy. Buy a copy for your friend. Buy a copy for you know someone who can't afford it in the Lady Gang Facebook group, just like you did with our book. Like, let us make her a bestseller. She deserves it. She's had an insane career. I can't wait. For all of it, I can't wait to read this. And congratulations. And thanks for making time for us, Garcia. Oh, thank you. I I mean, it doesn't even feel like I'm here promoting anything. I just really enjoy talking to you guys. And continued success. We love you so much. much. We love you guys so much. See you See next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social at Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. Stream the biggest movies and TV shows for free on Pluto TV. Watch movies like Titanic and G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra, plus TV shows like CSI and Star Trek The Next Generation. Starting this month, check out the 24-7 Stargate channel exclusively on Pluto TV, plus hundreds of channels and thousands of movies and TV shows absolutely free. Download the free Pluto TV app on your favorite streaming device and start watching today.